so we have this series we're starting, and it's going to be two or three weeks, and it's called I Am Willing. And I wanted to start off today with reading kind of the reason for that and the foundation for this scripture, um, or for this message. And that's not me talking, this is Jesus talking, I am willing. And there's a direct quote from scripture, and it's in Matthew chapter 8 and verses um, 1 through 3. And so put up that up, Terrence, the first one. So this is actually, uh, yeah, starts at verse 1. And we're going to talk about this verse today, but this is, the, this is where it all comes from. When he had come down from the mountain after done preaching, great multitudes followed him, speaking of Jesus. And behold, a leper came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Verse 3, then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Three short verses today. It may take three weeks to get through the, the thought and the concept of I am willing. That's in Jesus' DNA. That's in Jesus' character. And in, um, uh, sorry, in John 8 and 32, Jesus actually says these words. He says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And I believe he's also saying about me. You'll know the truth about who I am and it will make you free. Not just the truth about your life, which is important and true, or the truth about scripture, which is important and true, but I want to today talk about the truth of Jesus's character and say, he is willing. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I want to do an example. Does anybody have in here a hundred dollar bill that they want to just, I'm not going to steal it. I'll give it back. I promise I'm not going to rip it. I just, I want to do an example. Rick, give Rick a big round of applause here. So you can stay there. I'll come to you. I know. Exactly. <laughs> Lunch is on Rick. Haven't been to the bank yet. <laughs> All right, I'll give it back, I promise. So you may get it back at the end, but we'll see. So, so this is Rick's $100 bill, and yeah, he's buying lunch for Matthew. So here you go. Uh, so uh, thanks for letting me borrow this, Rick. And so here's, he, here's the concept I want you to get. A lot of times people will say this often, and I think maybe you've been in this boat. Maybe you've felt this as well. Maybe you've said, Look, I know God can X, Y, Z. I know God can heal. I know God can restore. I know God can provide, whatever. I know God can, but I just wonder if he will. I just don't know that he will. So Rick is completely in his ability to give me this. Rick can't. Now, his wife might not let him, but <laughs> for all intents and purposes, Rick, Rick, Rick can, like, it's, it's not, a, like his, he just gave it to me. So Rick can give me this money, but I don't know that he's willing. I don't know that his wife's willing. <laughs> like, there may be other intentions for this, lunch, maybe flowers, for I don't, just, I mean, I don't know, whatever the, in, car as, yeah, car parts, like, <laughs> I don't know what his intention is, but today, this is what I want, this can represent and does represent your need. Okay, so it's in Rick's power. And I don't think for most of us here, and it may not be, and that's a different subject, and if you're in that place, that's okay. But I think for most of us here, we don't doubt God's power. We don't doubt God's sovereignty and God's immense power. I mean, most of you, and if you don't, that's totally good, believe in creation. And God created the world. So I think your issue, whatever it is, my issue, is not that big of a deal to God. I think you may be okay thinking that, but the question is, is Jesus willing? So this today represents your need. I don't know that Rick's willing, and so is that your place with God? And I want to I wanna point out to you that this scripture says that Jesus absolutely is willing to bless you. He's absolutely more than willing to give you exactly what is already yours. Healing, <laughs> blessing, favor, life, joy, peace. He's willing to give it to you. And so I want to break down this story a little bit, and I want you to see the truth, and I believe it will and can set you free. I think it's amazing what Laura said about, do you believe it? Then you're going to you know, provide action behind it. Because whether it's true or not, it really matters if you believe it. Because if you don't believe in, as an example, tithing, that's okay. You're, 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 you're not going to do it. Whether it's true or not doesn't matter. If you do it, it's because you believe it. Yeah. 
if you believe that this ground is sturdy enough to hold you, you'll stand on it. Or a seat. I wish I had some chairs up here. I just thought of it. Like if we had some rinky-dink chair, if I don't believe that that chair will hold me, I'm not going to sit in it. So your belief is incredibly important, and I believe it's incredibly important what you believe about Jesus, his character. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So this text that we just read, we're going to break it down a little bit, but this text that we just read comes after the Sermon on the Mount, the most famous message that's ever been preached on the face of the earth, rocked the entire world. If it was YouTube, it would be the most viewed YouTube video of our day. I promise you, better than Justin Bieber, as much as I like the guy, it's going to be better. So this message is incredible, but yet it was incredibly controversial. It was not what everybody thought it was. I mean, like, he completely flips the script on the way they did life, on the way that they did. Now, the temple and their religion and their God was incredibly important to them back then. And so when a guy comes in and actually claims to be God and then says everything opposite of what they thought before, their worlds get a little bit shaken, especially the Pharisees and the people who made the living proclaiming God's word or teaching God's law, Jesus comes in and flips it. Like he says, you've heard it said an eye for an eye, repay evil for evil. I say, love your enemies. Like back then that was ground shaking. Like right now it's kind of like, yeah, you know, you should be nice to people. Like we talk about that all the time. Back then it was like, no, if you wronged me, you know, I'm going to punch you back. I'm taking boxing classes just so you know, so watch out. (laughs) So, It says eye for an eye, but Jesus flips it and says, no, love your enemies. And in fact, if somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek and let them slap you again. Like there's a lot that goes into that, but he's turning it around and he's completely, I mean, he says, you've heard it said, hate those who wrong you, like hate your enemies, run the other way. But he says, pray for those who persecute you. Like everything he says. And so the Pharisees don't like him. The law keepers don't approve of him. And he comes down this mountain and he's met with the worst of the worst of the worst. You think having COVID is bad. Like having leprosy is a death sentence. And I, I mean that. Like when you were declared to have leprosy, you were, they, they, they did a ceremony over you like to say goodbye to everybody you knew because your life was over completely over. And so this guy comes and there is so many laws surrounding leprosy that Jesus has got his work cut out for him already. So he preaches this amazing message, comes down the mountain, and he's immediately met with opposition. And I don't know about you, but sometimes Sunday afternoons are the hardest because we come to church and we're encouraged and we're inspired and then crap happens at home and it's like, We're immediately met with a call on Monday morning from a collector or a doctor or, you know, a relationship or we get the text from somebody that there's, you know, a a, a rub in relationship or something happens immediately after you're encouraged and inspired. Same thing happens with Jesus. He's like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to change the world. Things are going to be different from now on. But then, so even the son of God goes through incredibly difficult times. So I want to read those verses one more time. And I want you to get the picture of this, and then we'll talk about it. So he'd come down from the mountain delivering this amazing message. Great multitudes followed him. So there's thousands, if not you know, tens of thousands of people following him. Great multitudes followed him. So that's, there's a crowd here. And behold, a leper came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I'm willing, be cleansed immediately his leprosy was cleansed. The first thing I think I want to point out is this guy, this leper, he comes to Jesus and he worships him. He comes to Jesus and he worships Jesus. That's his posture. That's his attitude. That's his place. He doesn't come and if you uh, he, does, he doesn't come and point fingers and say prove it. He doesn't come at, with with um you know, doubt or or worry. He might have those things, but he comes and he worships Jesus. And I think I wonder sometimes how we come to Jesus with our needs. I deserve this. I need this. 
I don't know what your spirit is or what your heart is when we're praying, but I love the spirit of this guy. He comes and he worships Jesus. Now, let me give you some leprosy facts. So if you encountered somebody with leprosy and you were within at six feet, no joke, that's not a new thing like it was back then, within six feet of a leper, in order to stay clean, you had to go outside of the city, shave your head, Amen. Shave your eyebrows. You had, <laughs> you laughing in my head? Okay, all right. Just you shave your head. Why don't you have bald head and people make fun of you? So, no, I'm joking. Um, so, you, 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 you would have to go outside of the city, shave your head, shave your eyebrows, wait over a week to make sure you didn't have leprosy in order to be able to come back in the city. So, a leper is not allowed to go around people at all. And so, he risks his life and he comes out in the middle of the square to find Jesus. He doesn't care what people think of him. He risks being shunned and yelled at and screamed at because he doesn't care. He's going to come and he's going to worship Jesus. Here's, here's some, some more facts. It, it's a disease that works from the inside out, so it destroys your nervous system. So it doesn't necessarily just, I used to think that your like, arms and stuff just fell off, but what it does is it starts on the inside and works its way out to slowly destroy a human's body, and it still exists in parts of the world today, but it destroys your life. It's incredibly contagious, more than COVID, it's contagious. It erases your identity. It deadens your senses, so it makes you think you can do more than you actually can do. You, you don't have senses, so you touch stuff, and then you're, you, know, you, 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 don't get, um, you get burned, and then you experience you know, that you, you look horrible because you're doing stuff that you don't think is going to hurt you like it's going to hurt you. So that's what leprosy does. So that's this guy. So he comes, and he worships Jesus. And, and, and your situation may be, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to handle this financial situation, this business endeavor I want to do, or God, I want to start a business, or God, I want to I, I be an influencer. I don't know what your dream is, but it may seem like you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go, but I love what this guy does. He has no other choices. He says, you know what? I'm going to go find Jesus. So whatever it is you're facing, you can bring to Jesus because as we'll discover, he is willing. He's willing to meet you where you're at. He's willing to walk through life with you. Jesus is more than willing. And I think it's interesting to know what the guy doesn't ask for. He doesn't ask for healing. He asks to be cleansed. He asks to be cleaned so he can go back to life as normal so he can go back and worship in the temple so he can go back to be around his family he says god restore me back to the way life used to be and maybe that's where you're at i've been there god i don't know what to do but i want to get it back to the way it should be i don't want this disease on the inside of me and so he comes with the heart that says okay god I'm going to trust you. I'm going to worship you. And the coolest thing, what Jesus' response is, Jesus touches him. Jesus touches him, which is just as audacious as that guy going out into the crowds, is Jesus, almighty God, clean and pure, undefiled, touching the worst of the worst. And that's a picture of what Jesus does to every one of us. Despite how bad we are, despite how bad we've been, Jesus touches us. He doesn't say you gotta get clean first and then I'll touch you. He doesn't say you gotta get right first. You gotta get perfect right and then I'll do life with you. Jesus touches him. He goes out to the worst and he doesn't have to touch him, right? There's many miracles that Jesus does that he just speaks a word. He just says, go be healed. Jesus didn't have to like be infected or risk being infected with leprosy, he says, I want to touch you because I want to prove to you. I want to prove to you, I believe that I love you. I want to prove to you that it doesn't matter how bad you feel like it is, how big the hundred dollar bill, the need, the desire is, how big it is, it doesn't matter. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to come and I want 
to touch you. He's showing his compassion. He's showing that he fulfills the law. He's demonstrating his power that the disease doesn't affect him. Jesus affects the disease. Scripture also says that greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. So whatever you touch has to prosper. Whatever you touch has to be blessed because greater is he, God, who lives inside of you than he who's in the world. Jesus touches him and affects and changes him. And I I believe this is a complete picture of what Jesus does for us because whether you know it or not, sin and leprosy have a lot of commonalities. They both destroy your identity. They both work from the inside out. They both make you think you can do more than you actually can do. And when we get messed up with it, sometimes it can be bad, but Jesus says, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you and I'm gonna touch you. And then he says this in Romans chapter five and verse 17. Paul says this about Jesus. He says, for the sin of this one man, Adam caused death to rule over many. So the sin of Adam caused death to rule over many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. Even greater than your sin, your mistake, your lack, whatever it is, is God's grace and his gift of righteousness for all who receive it. Okay, there's a trick. All who will receive it. You don't have to receive it. All who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. You don't have to strive for it. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, you're already the righteousness of Jesus. So he comes to you and he says, I'm gonna reach out and I wanna touch you. I wanna touch you in the middle of your sin, in the middle of whatever it is, God wants to do it. Finally, in the story, Jesus says these famous words and what our whole series is about, I am willing. See, the guy doesn't doubt God's power, and you may be in that, but he does doubt his willingness, and Jesus says to him, nope, I am willing. I'm more than willing. I'm not just able, but I am willing. And this, this, this whole chapter is incredibly amazing to me. You should go home and read it sometime, or pull it up on your phone and read it, because The whole chapter is a highlight reel. Matthew's not just going into chronologically telling you God's life or Jesus' life through this. He's highlighting God's amazing miracles and what he does. He goes on to to, to heal the centurion's daughter. He just sends a word. He says she's healed. And then he goes on and heals Peter's mother-in-law. And the chapter is incredible. It's a highlight reel of who Jesus is. He goes on and on. And all throughout Jesus' life, he heals, he meets needs, He meets people where they're at in the middle of their muck, in the middle of their mire. He meets people exactly where they're at. And it also says in John 21 and 25, one of disciples is writing about this. He says, Jesus did so many other things. We could go enlisted, but we'd be here all day. Break down, we're breaking down three verses today and it's gonna take us 30 minutes. I mean, you wanna break down the whole scripture? Yeah, we'll stay here for all day. That'd be great. Miss the Seahawks game because they're not winning anyway, so... I don't want to believe. (laughs) Jesus, I didn't pick him, so I don't want to believe for him. So Jesus did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose the whole world could not contain the books that were written. Like, that's an incredible picture. Jesus did so many things, you couldn't even begin to comprehend everything he did. Every little encounter, every word he said that changed somebody's life, that inspired world change, that inspired family change, that inspired something. And you know what scripture I hang on for most of my life is in Hebrews chapter 13 in verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it back then, why not believe for it now? Why not believe for it now? It was significant that we sang that song, I believe for it. Because I, I, I'm challenging you today to believe that God is willing for you. Like when it comes down to it and you get the report, when it comes down to it and all hell breaks loose in your life, when it comes down to it, do you really believe that God is not only able, but he is willing? Can we start there and just say, okay, I don't have all the answers, and I don't. God is not a transactional God. 
If you do this, you will receive this. God is not like you put a penny in the machine, you'll get the sticker or the tattoo or the gumball. God, that is not who God is. And we can choose to believe it and believe his word and believe it even though we don't feel it or we can choose to question it and try to make sense of everything. Because let me just tell you, you're not gonna make sense of God ever, so quit trying. The more you try to make sense, the more you're gonna doubt. The more you try to make sense of everything in your life, the more you're gonna doubt that God is there. But then all of a sudden, when you choose to just trust him, God just shows up. And we can hear story after story after story in here of people saying, okay, God just showed up in my life. God just showed up. When I said, okay, God, I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to jump around, Terrence, just so you know. Mark 6, chapter, or Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. When we choose to live by how we view things in life and how we feel, our faith gets a little bit rocked or a little bit pushed back. And in Mark chapter 6, there's a great story. Jesus goes home to his hometown. And when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who were here, or many who were there, heard him and were amazed. That's a good start. They're amazed. But then they start asking questions. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's the wisdom that has been given to him? Like, none of this makes sense. None of this is understanding in my natural mind. In verse three, they're doing the same thing we all do sometimes. What are these remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this the dude we changed his diaper? Isn't this Mary's son and mother, the brother of James and Joseph? Isn't the guy we played soccer with and broke my nose when he hit the baseball? Like, isn't this the kid we played with? And his sisters were here with us and they took offense at him. Like, Yes, his miracles are amazing, but this is the same dude I grew up with. So they saw it. And I believe wholeheartedly that if you're looking for Jesus in your life, you'll find him. If you're not looking for him, you can easily ignore him and say, eh, that just happened. No, that was God's provision in your life. You left late today because you were going to die in a car wreck. You relate to work because I, I, I don't know, not everything is that way. But if you look for God in, my li in your life, you can say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what I have. Thank you, Jesus, for my prov your provision. Verse four goes on. And they took offense at him. The next verse. And he could not do any miracles there. Except lay his hands on a few sick people. This is the only time in scripture where Jesus doesn't heal all or deliver all, or meet all needs. Except his hands on a few sick people at them, and he was amazed at their lack of faith. Now I'm not saying, hear me out, okay? Honestly, hear me out. Because you don't see the answer that you think you want in your life, it doesn't mean it's your fault. Okay, so everybody will go to, it's my fault if I don't see X, Y, Z in my life, the $100 bill. I didn't get the $100 bill, so it's my fault. Because it's not God's fault, so it's gotta be somebody's fault. And my encouragement to you today is don't go there. Ask God and say, God, I, I don't have the answers, but I'm still gonna believe. There's the man in scripture who wants his son healed. And Jesus asked him, do you believe? And he says, yes, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Can that be our posture? Can we come and worship God and say, I don't, I, I don't have all the answers? When you're being honest, you're gonna say, I don't know a lot, but you're gonna say, that's okay because I still trust you, God. I still trust you, almighty God. So why can't we believe for big things today? Why can't you believe for big things in your life? Why can't you believe to own the company? Why can't you believe that healing can come to your home? Why can't you believe that God can grow back fingers, that God can grow back limbs, that God can take away cancer, that God can restore relationships that seem utterly impossible, that God can bless you in the midst of turmoil, that God can give you peace when everything around you seems like it is the worst possible situation? Why can't you believe that God is willing? That's what we sang in the song. They say this mountain can't be moved, right? How many things can you Google and say, you know, I don't know, start filling your mind with doubt. Just this week, I'm prepping for this message and I believe this with my whole heart, but I'm having conversations and I'm 
calling my wife and I'm like, like, what do I do with this? What do I do with this situation that doesn't, what do I do with this? I can get lost in the what ifs or I can get lost in my hope is in Jesus. And that's where I want to live. I don't claim to know everything and I don't claim to have all the answers. Matthew eleven seven 7 says this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find, knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Verse nine, or what man is there among you? What good dad is there among you? If the son asks for bread, he'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him his serpent? Verse 11, if then, being evil, all of us being imperfect, that's what he's saying, he's saying you're not evil, he's just saying you're imperfect, you being a human, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven, who is perfect, never made a mistake, will give good gifts and good things to those who ask him? Can you not say God's no for him already? Like so many of us, we ask God, we, or we don't even ask because we think God's gonna say no. Because we think I haven't done this, this, or this, or this right. I look back at my past. Quit looking at you. Quit saying no for God already. Risk believing God a little bit. Step out in faith and say, okay, no, my son can be healed and completely healthy in the name of Jesus. My daughter can be well. My marriage can be restored and be the best it's ever been. The last 20 years have been miserable, but from this day forward, I believe we can do the work we need to do in order for our marriage to get healthy, healed, and whole. My body can be back to where it was when I was 15, maybe not size-wise, but in all health and energy and excitement and exuberance. I don't, I don't know what it is you're believing for or what you've forgotten about believing for, but I'm here to say that the truth is that Jesus is willing. Ask him again. Ask him again. Bodie and Lexi were sitting at the table the other night, and I forget which one it was, but those are our kids, and they, they, they were talking, and I think there was a cookie, and there was a couple bites left, and I ate it. It was really good. And I think one of them said, um, I wanted that cookie. And I, we, we both said, we didn't know that. You didn't ask. And I thought, right there. We, we just claim to know God's will already for our lives, so we don't even ask. We don't even say, God, you can meet me in my need. You can meet me right here. And so I don't know where you're at, but I want to sing that song again. T, why don't you come on up? I want us to sing, I believe for it. And with, with, with a new excitement, with something new on the inside of you today, I believe that God can encourage you. God can I I ignite some hope in you that says, okay, God, I, I don't have all the answers, but you know what? I'm going to believe for it. They say that, people around it, because we get lost in it didn't work for them, or I didn't see it happen here, or I didn't see it happen there, so we get questioning, we're like, this doesn't make sense, why, 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 just say, you know what, I'm going to believe for it. They say that, but I'm going to say, God, we believe for it. No matter what it is, I'm going to believe for it. Matt here, my brother-in-law, worked at the Los Angeles Dream Center, which is an amazing church in L.A., and they took over uh, Angela's Temple, which uh, a lady by the name of um, Amy Simple McPherson, um, she started that church, and they ended up taking it over, and it's an amazing place. You ever can go down there and visit it, but Amy Simple McPherson, she kind of like started this revival, and she was not perfect. She, there's a lot of stuff out there about her that's, you know, maybe true and untrue, but she wasn't perfect, but she started this revival, and um, she was kind of at the head of it, and so Jesus just met them where they're at, and it, there's pictures of Angela's temple with ambulances outside of it, because the ambulances went to Angela's temple before they went to the hospital, because they knew that God was doing something there. And I don't, I don't know all the answers, and I don't know what happened, but there was some kind of faith there. There was some kind of something going on that they started to believe God for it. And I believe we can do that here. I don't have all the answers, but hey, let's see some ambulances in the parking lot because we're getting healed here. Because we believe, because we believe that Jesus is well and able. And I'm sick of people being sick. I'm sick of being people being tired, people dying to suicide because they don't know that there's hope in Jesus. 
They don't know that there's deliverance from drugs. They don't know that there's deliverance from depression and anxiety here, not in this place or on these people, but in Jesus. And we just believe it. So let's be the start of something today. Let's just ask God and just see what he does. So let's, let's prove it, God. Like, you can. So I'm going to believe for it. Instead of just being this finger pointer, instead of being finding all the negative, I'm going to say, God, I'm going to believe for it. You are willing. And so I don't know what you're facing today. If you got a need or you got something, we're going to have some people up here while, while we sing this song. And they're going to face you. And if you just want to be prayed for, they're going to pray with you. And they're going to believe God that he is willing for your life. Don't say God's no for him. Don't say God's no for him. He is willing. Would you bow your heads with me really quick?